Yo, what's going on everybody? It's your boy, Motorman Dan, and today you guys have been waiting for this for a while now. Uh, today we're going to be doing Tear Maker. I guess I could put my camera up. It's not really blocking anything. So I went ahead and put in, and if you look at the description beneath, you'll have the Discord link if you're not already in it. Um, and in there I posted this Tear Maker as well as a map Tear Maker, which we'll be doing that as well. Um, but, so I just wanted to cover uh, what I think about the traps as of right now. After this, I'm going to be doing a series where I kind of really go in-depth for each individual trap, and I might come to some conclusions later on that might surprise myself, like new things that I find out about a trap or new implementations or how to use it a little bit better or worse, <laughs> which uh, might make it probably better, right? So it might make some of these traps a little bit better. I'm looking at like Haymaker, Swinging Mace. Some of these ones I don't play with a ton. So maybe their tr uh, full potential isn't really unlocked here. Um, but this is all the items in the game, which is everything spellbook related. So traps, trinkets, weapons, and heroes. All right, and then the, what I was thinking about doing for the tiers. So the last tier list I had was how good it, was it at doing its job? You know, you have something like Arcane Dragon, which is supposed to apply the Arcane debuff in a line and bounce off walls. How well did it do that? And that's where I put it. And then you'd have something like Brimstone, holds charges, you know, does arcane damage, burn fire damage, or damage over time. How well does it do that? You know, in my experience. And then I put that up there. And so, um, you know, it, it wasn't necessarily in comparison to each other, a little bit of that. But uh, but this time, I'm going to make, make a little bit of a different mental approach. And this is um, <clears throat> not necessarily the percentage of games that I would play with it. Um, but this is like um, almost almost like how to beat the game, what traps you can bring, or what you want to use in order to beat the game. So S tier is going to be things that you probably always want to bring. It doesn't matter if you're playing endless, doesn't matter if you're playing for high score, doesn't matter. And, and, and we're going to kind of keep in, in mind the different gameplay styles there are. So you've got speed runs, you've got endless, you've got story mode, casual, you've got new beginner player, um, and you've got high scores. Uh, and, you got high scores on normal mass and high scores um, on endless as well. And so we're going to kind of take a look at all of that um, with all the new stuff included and all the new uh, updates they've made. So it's maybe going to look a little different, but there's going to definitely be some similarities with what we've seen before and what we're going to see here today. All right, to kick things off, we've got the Acid Geyser. All right, uh, this goes into C tier, right? You really don't need it. If you're going to go for score, you're going to bring the acid wall instead, the ice wall with the um, acid upgrade, or you're going to even bring the acid cannon as well, especially if you're in co-op. Um, if you're in co-op, you'll bring the acid cannon because uh, your other partner will bring the snow cannon. And so you're not really going to bring it for, for endless. You're not going to bring it for high score. Um, you're probably not going to use it too much whenever you go into casual play. If you want to try a physical damage, physical heavy build, um, then maybe. So this has some implementation. It can do something. It's just not very good overall. All right, that's the Acid Geezer. All right, Alchemist Satchel. Just skip it. <laughs> you guys already know. Definitely the meme uh, meme of the day there. Okay, then we've got the Arcane Dragon. I'm going to put Arcane Dragon in the B tier. Um, I think it's I think it's good for, uh, for high score. It's pretty good for endless if you have the right place to put it. Okay, um, so it's very situational, this one. Uh, there's not a ton of great spots, but you might find yourself, especially in co-op, with an extra loadout slot that you can fit the Arcane Dragon because it makes sense to with the map that you're given, in which case it's a B tier. All right, we have the Arcane Staff. I'm going to put the Arcane Staff in the C tier. Um, you know, it's, it's not bad. The secondary could probably be more like i wish it was like a pulse like it pulls down on you and then when you know like a like a like a thor smash or something but like like it pulsated on you and then and then like scattered out that'd be really cool but it's a little bit you know this the, the secondary is a little finicky primary is okay the attack speed's okay none to really write home about so you know i, I probably wouldn't there's so many other good weapons and and yeah it's just, it's, it's just meh you know maybe maybe like low b tier top c tier but i'm gonna throw in top c tier Right, we got arrow walls. Arrow walls are insane damage, man. Not only are they relatively cheap, 
They're very good in a lot of different locations. Fire, if you can, if you can make it happen, depending on the map. If not, Pierce is fine. You know, um, I mean, it catches small guys because small guys run into them if you place them in the right, uh, you know, configuration. And the arrows, I mean, they have such long range, and each individual arrow does damage, so they're good against the new race as well as every other race. I mean, they're just they're just bonkers, man. They're just that good. Um, think about Cyclopses, for example. You know, so it shoots out four volumes of arrows and nine arrows each and whenever it shoots them out if it kills the cyclops the other arrows are still coming out right if the first volley kills the cyclops and so then the other cyclops is healed but then they die and then another cyclops heals and they die and so it's just like out of one trap it's crazy man <laughs> absolutely crazy so yeah um arrow walls definitely s, s tier uh okay now we've got the uh ballista auto ballista so these are actually pretty good for um speed running and they're pretty good for uh, endless, uh, well, endless in general, yeah, and then uh, high score as well, uh, if you can go co-op. Um, but even solo, you might run these. Um, they've gotten a lot better, so they used to have a huge targeting issue. The targeting is sort of better. It's still not great, but it is better than what it was. Um, so I'm going to probably put these somewhere in the mid to low A tier. Uh, I wouldn't put them on B tier because they're not quite as situational as something on the B tier, but yeah, there you go. Barricades, bring barricades, and that's basically GG. Barricades allow everything really to have a purpose. You know, barricades, I mean, you, you put barricades at the top of stairs and enemies will route to the other side. You know, assuming you have another area that's open. Um, so yeah, barricades, barricades, barricades. I, you, you can, you, you know, do maps without them. Something like coastal hallways will be difficult to do. You know, if you're still trying to make part-time and not find the rift room, but I mean, there's just so many, so many great spots for the barricade, and you definitely need them on 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 pretty much everything you do, even speed running. So, yeah, 100% barricade. All right, blade staff. Blade staff is a really good weapon. I'm gonna put it in A tier um, because you don't really need a weapon, but there is one S tier weapon as well. Um, blade staff is really good. It's the probably the best, in my opinion. It's the best melee weapon there is. Uh, it heals you, does good damage, has interrupt. Um, you can kind of hold an enemy in a spot for a while with the blade staff. Blunderbuss is an A tier weapon. Uh, I'm probably going to, yeah, keep the trap above those. Um, I'll put the blunderbuss above it. So the blunderbuss, you know, busts itself. So the blade staff can do a knockup, but it only knocks up the, the smaller dudes. The blunderbuss, when you get the ice upgrade, the other one I wouldn't normally recommend because it, it kind of explodes enemies out of your kill box. I don't, I don't really know anybody who seriously uses the increased explosion because I don't <laughs> maybe if you uh maybe find like the lava pits or something and you have them choke pointed onto one side maybe I don't know I don't really know because then they some of them fly to the other side where the caves are so maybe that wouldn't work uh quick pads question mark anyways um when you run the ice upgrade though you are beefing up your damage for the blunderbuss now the blunderbuss We'll do a deep dive into it, but it is uh, reduced headshot damage because there are four project or many projectiles that do a headshot. Um, and then something else to know about it: if if your four shots are up, if you switch to another weapon, you can get another one or two shots off. And when you switch back over to the blunderbuss, it's already reloaded, so you're skipping the reload animation. Of course, we're going to talk about more about that. But anyways, the blunderbuss is a very solid weapon, uh, good for catching runners. If you're not, if you're not, if you don't have a high APM. Um, then blunderbuss is definitely a good option or if you have like you know if you feel like you're slower or older or whatever I think it's a good choice all right we got the boom barrels um, I'm gonna put the boom barrels on B I know it hurts me to do that because I love the boom barrels I think it's such a cool trap but with even more traps coming out and uh, and everything I just the boom barrels are good I don't think I would seriously use them in any capacity um, hurts me to say that they are good but they're it, they are situational right if you're using lasers it's hard to use the boom barrels because they'll blow up on the lasers depending on where you put them they're not really that great on endless because endless enemies scale health uh they do a lot of damage sure and you can debuff enemies to make them take even more damage so they will carry you through the mid game on on endless but once you get to past you know wave 75 100 boom barrels start 
you know, they stop trailing off and it would just be better to bring another trap kind of thing. And so if you're playing for the short game or the long game and they're not good for combos and they're not good for speed running stuff, you know, even casual play, it's difficult because they have such a low cooldown or such a long cooldown and they only affect that one area that's usually at the open because it's a tall wall. So the ceilings are tall or if there is a ceiling at all and you typically want to fight within a closed or condensed space. So anyways, yeah, they're, they're just like the Arcane Dragon, situational. Probably not going to use them much, um, but they're but they're good uh, for sure. All right, Briar Trap. We're going to put this in the top of A tier. I know. Don't get mad at me. Listen, this is my opinion. You're welcome to have your own. I think Briar Trap is, a, is an A tier trap. Okay. A plus, actually. Uh, but I wouldn't put it in S tier because I still think there's better S tier traps. <clears throat> okay, 100%. There's better traps than this. But here, here's here's the deal. Um, there's a couple of flaws with the Briar Trap that I have experienced myself. <clears throat> One, it fills in barricade spots. When a barricade gets destroyed, it'll fill it in, and you can't replace the barricade because the Briar has already grown into it. This has caused me uh, a lot of trouble on several maps. Probably the main example is Coliseum. A uh, Firelink blows up an important gate I have, and I have a Briar Trap everywhere. And it just fills it in and I can't close it. So now I'm fighting on two sides instead of one side. And it's just like, ah, if only I didn't have it and had other traps. Okay, so it, it can be a detriment to your setup depending on what you're doing. I know, use offset it or whatever. And that's, that's a very valid point. But if you don't, then there you go. You don't offset it. The reason you don't offset it is for its efficiency. Uh, because it covers more area to affect more enemies. Um, or has the potential to do that. So, okay, so that's the first thing. The second thing is um, it's not good for uh, scoring. Uh, unless you have a co-op partner that can bring it and it's not good for Yes, it is a times two, but it's times two because that's slow in damage, but you already have slow on tar So and you need tar on endless because in enemies go really really fast and 50% reduction of speed versus 20 is much different um, to, to be affected by the traps and everything plus it the slow on the tar lingers as well um, with the upgrade that you want to get if you're going to go enlist for scoring or something like that. So typically you want to not bring this, especially if you want solo for endless, unless you're just trying to get 25 waves to play casually. I think this is great for casual. Again, you know, A tier is, is great, uh, but not like superb. Okay. Uh, so it's good for casual gaming for sure. Good for beginner uh, stuff, especially if you combo it with something that can keep enemies on the briar trap, you know, a as it does damage, it expands. From, from the squares that do the damage and there seems to be some sort of calculation that's like damage stored within like a tree line of anyways we we covered it before on the live stream it's really confusing i don't even know if that's how it works we just think it is but uh yeah so it's definitely a plus tier all right well, now we got the b -b 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 brimstone i think the brimstone's in the later end of the tier list so now that we got the briar trap we already have the lasers we've got the grinder uh Dappers shouldn't be much of a problem. I mean, you can even go fight it yourself with the... I mean, we've got the new trinket that gives you 70% uh, damage reduction. So now you can go melee um, the sappers or just go tank them yourself, right? You just walk up and, and they'll hit you and you'll be fine. So, you know, Brimstone has kind of found its way into the bottom of the A-list. It's still really good. Uh, I wouldn't bring it for war scenarios as well because, again, more enemies. It's trigger-based. If you have like 500 enemies running at you and you have a, th a trap that triggers seven times and goes on a cooldown versus a trap that's continuous or a trap that, you know, keeps dropping barrels or an arrow wall that pierces like 15 of them, you know what I'm saying? Uh, or kills a bunch of them and this trap doesn't even kill them. It just does damage and debuffs. Um, yeah, it's, 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 it's still got a purpose. You know what? I've convinced myself. I'm going to put it on B tier. It's situational just because of the fact that you have so many other traps to take care of what Brimstone is known to take care of, which are sappers. Um, except for the one place I probably would still use it is maybe Order Enclave. Yeah, maybe Order Enclave. As a matter of fact, the last time I played it, I, I ended up using Briar, and Briar worked just fine for the sappers, so um, maybe not. <laughs> yeah okay all right cool yeah so bottom of the b tier then that's probably where i put that okay we got the broadsword not a great weapon i mean it's good it's got, got a lot of damage the secondary is kind of cool but it uses up your mana it doesn't do a ton of damage um yeah it's it's got a lower swing speed so you have less interrupt than you do with the blade staff um yeah it's just there all right s tier 
lasers there's a lot of cool things you can do with lasers a lot of places you can place them and you can easily set up a kill box with lasers and some other stuff i mean they do have to be augmented because they don't do a lot of damage themselves but it's consistent continuous damage and they catch things out and they could do fire which is really good i mean these things are juicy let me tell you um, I typically run these in almost every kill box I do on top of that they can go on high ceilings and they can be on low ceilings so very very good all right we got the pounder and I'm gonna put the pounder up here in front of the blunderbuss I don't use it a lot right now but I do know that they buffed it for it for good I mean this is a good trap uh, the pounders uh, buff cooldown reduced by like three or four seconds crazy <clears throat> so this thing is gonna be triggering quite often in your kill box and I wouldn't you know I would I would kind of guess to see or, or I would, I would, what is the phrase I'm going to look for? I don't know. I would, I would guess that people are going to start using this a lot more where they would normally use maybe lasers or on a low ceiling and you, in kind of in the enemy's path as they're pounding around, you just place a bunch of pounders over them. They're relatively cheap and they do stun. Uh, stuns last for three seconds. And so if you got like a stun corridor with arrow walls or something else, you know, uh, like vertical saw blades and these things pull, 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 stun everything. And then all of a sudden everything fires and then stuns again and fires again. I mean, this is really cyclical. Uh, yeah, really low cooldown. It's really good stuff. So I think it's definitely A tier category right now. All right, then we've got the lightning staff. I think I'm going to put it behind the acid geezer. You know, it's got such a low fire rate. The secondary is good, but you kind of have you kind of have to spam it. But at the same time, if you hold the charge, you know, you're wa you're always pedaling backwards. You're never going forwards with this weapon. You're always running backwards because. You just can't do enough damage to kind of move forward with the enemies. Um, the stun is okay. It's good, I guess, against Craig. The first time you see Cygnus, you can't even get it for Craig, so it doesn't matter. Um, I guess Corbash, but by then you have other other stuff in your inventory, so I don't know. Uh, yeah, it's definitely bottom C tier for me. Uh, it's, it's good damage, but it's just got such a low fire rate, and it just doesn't do a whole lot for you um, that I put it there. All right. Now we got the flower. I'm going to bring the flower. Hmm. I think I'm going to put it behind brimstone. So for combos, it's not very good. It's one combo. It does the same thing as butterflies. We'll see where, butter, where we put butterflies here in a second. Same debuff, so they don't stack. Um, one happens and, or the other happens. Whichever has the longest cooldown will continue to happen. I mean, they could they technically happen at the same time if they're affected at the same time, but the combo point itself doesn't stack. So you won't get two combos if you use butterfly and windows, uh, the windows and the flower. Uh, that being said, uh, it misses a B. It takes up a floor space. Um, so if you're trying to zigzag, it's a little bit harder to use, but if you do like an L shape, then you can put it on the inside of the L shape. That's totally legitimate. Um, <clears throat> I just, I just don't think it's good enough. And there's many other ways to crowd control enemies. It's pretty good because it affects a large area um so you can use it this is b tier but i think it's just too situational on how you have your kill box set up and and you you have to build for it you can't just have it as part of your kill box to, and, and expect it to 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 go really well and to be able to kind of afk it i guess um but it's not bad it does serve a purpose i just think it's too situational um, and it's not great for speedrunning or combos uh, or late game endless. And those are three types of gameplay out the window. You got casual playthrough and you got like beginner playthrough. You know, um, those kinds of things that you could use it for. Uh, so yeah, definitely B tier for me. All right. Now we got the crossbow. 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 Crossbow's pretty good. Uh, the extra stun damage is 15%. Which is what I now run instead of headshots do explosion. But if you do headshots do explosion and you kill a fire elemental or a fire lord with the headshot from the crossbow with that upgrade, it instantly kills the firelings because the explosion damage trickles down, which is nice. Um, saves you from having to trigger another stone staff or, or ice amulet and wasting a little bit more mana. Uh, it does have a zoom function. So first one we've seen so far that has a zoom function. Uh, so that's cool. It's pretty decent at taking out bats, um, but I just don't think it's that great of a weapon, although it's good. Um, however, as far as range weapon goes, I do use it a lot. I like to combo with Stone Staff or Ice Amulet. I know other people do. It's still good. Um, and that bonus percent damage, I would, I would encourage you guys to use that a little bit more. Or try to, anyways. If you have a lot of other modifiers kind of in an area, 
this is just going to amplify it even more for the damage that they're taking. So, for example, if you have like an armored ogre and you got a stone staff and you got, you know, an ice dart spitter or an ice wall and you have the crossbow, you're going to do more damage than if you have like the blunderbuss because it's going to have an extra modifier on it, 15%. And the 15% happens first and then the 30 from stone and 30 from ice. And so you're just kind of stacking it a little bit more. <clears throat> okay. So that's why I give it an 8 tier. It, you could say situational, but I think that it's definitely a good a good thing to run, like in, in every build uh, that you have. It really complements a lot of things. Cyclopean Gaze. Um, if you're running a melee build, I guess it's good, so I'm going to put it in situational. Uh, it's not as good as other trinkets, and it's really not as good as other traps. I find myself not really putting it in my loadout unless I don't have anything else to put in my loadout. Or if I'm running melee, then I'll put it in. Sometimes. But I'll get rid of this. I'll, like, this will be the, one of the first things I get rid of for another trap if I feel like I need another one running a melee. Um, so, yeah. All right, Cygnus. Cygnus is an S tier for sure. I got to get closer to you guys now that now that we're playing with Cygnus. Um, Cygnus is able to sleep. Uh, feign death is what it's called. And that allows him to watch the kill box and see what's happening inside. Also, it allows him to assassinate, so you can sit outside of a door that has sappers. Like on uh, Great Room, for example, sappers come out of the right-hand side if you're playing on Endless. Uh, and they always come out of the right-hand side, and it's always, you know, like every five or six or seven ways, whatever it is. And then you can sing this and just sleep, and then pop up, attack them, go back to sleep. And then stand up, you know, run around, go back to sleep. You can dodge uh, attacks. You can have gnolls go into your rift so they don't target you, saving your barricades. Um, you know, it, it allows you to kind of be with your kill box. If TNT archers are running up, then you can wait for them to die. And then you pop up and start like, you know, attacking again and getting involved. So it's a really, really useful tool. Uh, Cygnus's feign death ability. Plus he has the most mana in the game and mana is crucial because mana gives you CC and crowd control is king. Okay. <clears throat> I start spitters. If you're going to run a, uh, a run without barricades, you'll need I start spitters. Our spitters with ice, I should say. Our spitters without ice is really good for speedrunning, as you guys may have seen in speedrun versus Time Master. He used our spitters with, without ice, um, the extra duration, which is also a valid point, a valid idea. Um, <clears throat> it is, I, I I can't express to you how good the ice dart spitter is, or the dart spitter with ice upgrade. Um, when anyone says ice darts, this is what they're talking about. This trap right here. Uh, it can just absolutely shred everything, man. It's just so good. So anyways, if you're not using it already, I'd recommend using it. Everything up here, I'd, I'd recommend running in your in your loadout 100% of the time. And trust me, you won't lose. Okay, maybe not trust me, but, you know. Decoy has seen some interesting evolvements in its usefulness and utility. Behemoth has discovered some very unique ways to use the decoy. And that is to... Use it to block saw blades if you're bringing saw blades, which you probably should. It's definitely a good trap. Then it's a good way to block those, and it will bounce into the decoy and back out into your kill box. So that way you're not losing efficiency on the saw blades. I'm putting in seeds here because if you don't run saw blades, then that's not a problem. <laughs> and then they still don't do anything that you want them to do. They'll soak up TNT archer fire, which means your barricades are going to get hit. They're going to soak up uh, no grenadier fire, which means your barricades are going to get hit. Um, they're going to soak up an ogre charge, which means enemies are going to get flipped over your barricades if they're next to barricades. The one other practical use I have of them, and I haven't got this to work when I tried it. It was a while ago, but even before the last DLC. But I made like an the L-shaped barricade thing. I was talking about the flowers on the other side. But instead, you have a decoy on the other side, and enemies will walk down, around, and so they'll walk this way, over, and back towards the decoy, and then they have to walk back up in order to get out, and so you can put traps in front of the decoy. The problem is now we have archers, and archers will do that even better, so, you know. So, decoy sits in seats here, just because if you run saw blades, it's pretty big brain uh, to use these at the end of your kill box, so the saw blades bounce back, assuming you have barricades in, in between all of that as well. So, pretty big brain stuff. Um, but yeah, probably not, probably, you probably don't want to bring them unless you want to play around with it. Of course, these are like play around with, I guess these are like, you know, you could, you could definitely use them. Um, but you probably might be disappointed. 
And then these up here are like, yeah, for sure use everything on S and, and you know, switch out your loadout stuff on A with stuff on A and you'll, and you'll find success. All right, um, ice to freeze thing. Um, this one's actually pretty good. I ran this on slag field and it held its own. Although I wouldn't run it, in, you know, by itself. Um, where you want to use arrow walls is kind of the same place you want to use these most of the time. It's really good for combos because it affects everything in front of it. It's good for war scenarios, everything in front of it. Um, anytime you have lar large amounts of enemies, like endless, for example. Um, you know, whether you run freezer or, or acid, you can run both for extra combo points, of course. Uh, if you have a co-op player, you want to maybe bring one of each, uh, depending on what you want to do for your walls. I think it's good. Um, it might be a little bit situational, but I think it's good enough to not be that situational. So I'm going to put it at the bottom of eight tier. We've got the hammer. Now, I've been playing around with the hammer quite a bit. Um, I'm going to put it. Ab I'm going to put it above the broadsword so the hammer is a lot of fun uh, i got to admit you know i i've been playing with a little bit more i think with kelsey's levitate you can use the hammer and pull enemies into where she's levitating which is like over lava or something um so the very unique things that you can do with it it is situational uh it doesn't use a lot of mana to spin and it keeps everything kind of constantly like in the area and if you're gonna run a melee build now you have the opportunity to do that with the reptilian carapace and the damage reduction stacks which is bonkers which means you're hardly taking any damage from anything at all whenever you're spinning with the spinning upgrade where it takes reduced damage um, and the uh, where, you, where the damage reduction is higher and with the reptilian carapace combined it's crazy man and so you really become a huge tank with the uh, with a hammer you know typically ranged combat is better overall but if you run someone like Cygnus with the most amount of mana you run the hammer or Egan with the ground slam and the hammer I mean you're making some pretty sweet combos um, with uh, with high mana bar and the the dwarf and warhammer you really can do quite a bit here pretty good against firelings and sappers as well you just run straight into sappers they all blow up firelings as well they'll blow up hammer does a lot of damage on its uh primary attack so it's pretty good it's got a low uh, swing speed and you kind of have to get used to how it kind of you know how it swings a little bit and it's a little bit clunky uh so you have to use it for a while i think to get used to it I just think there are better options for weapons, and, and it's maybe a little situational, so, yeah. Um, anyways, do give it a try, though. If you haven't already, go, go ahead and give it a try. All right, Egan. Egan is the best item in the game. <laughs> All right. Uh, I say that. So, for Endless, Cygnus is good because he can sleep, which means you can kind of AFK if your kill box is set up to kind of AFK itself, right? Or if you don't have a place to stand off on the side and you've got a co-op partner, it's good for you to run Cygnus, maybe both of you. And one of you, you know, rest while the other one's, you know, doing the fighting and, and they can like go to the bathroom or whatever, because there's no pause option. And so Cygnus is kind of the kind of the pause option for co-op, right? Well, Egan, on the other hand, is just beautiful. Uh, Egan does damage, knockback, and he does uh, stun. Okay, so he's a time three combo himself. Okay. <laughs> with a knock up, uh, with anything that does like a, like a lift, like a gravity pillar, for example, or even the haymaker, the flip trap, anything that... that that causes enemies to move, Egan can go over there and force him to move even farther with his ground slam. It's really satisfying having a pillar on the outside. And then lift up enemies, and the and then you walk over there with Egan, do the ground slam, and then the enemies kind of just like fly off into the into the nether or whatever, wherever they go. So anyways, Egan's really good. Um, definitely crucial to have on unless you don't need a weapon if you have Egan. That's how good he is. He is a weapon. So that's why he's on the highest of the S tiers. Okay, we've got Elven Short Swords. Uh, listen. I think there's a reason for these. I think it's just speedrunning, maybe, on some maps. Um, but they kind of suck. So, C tier. We've got the Empty Rift Scroll. I'm also going to put that on C tier. Yes, it can save you from losing Rift Points, but if they get past your defenses and you have to use it, then your defenses aren't good enough because you can make it without it. Um, for casual play, it's good. For anything else, maybe not so much. Uh, I think the bug is still around in Endless where you can activate it and then your rift points will never go down ever again and then you have to restart Endless, which is still unfortunate. You know what? I think it's I think it's more useful than probably the Lightning Staff and the Elven Double Swords. Yeah, okay. 
Now we've got Flame Bracer. Flame Bracer is actually pretty good. It's pretty powerful. You know, it is fire, so it's a little situational. If you haven't mapped with fire enemies, there's nothing you can do about that. Um, or if you're like me and you play Scramble and run a fire uh, resistance or fire immunity on your debuffs, you bring it anyways because you're an idiot like me. Um, you know, I'll bring a whole fire loadout for that. Um, but, but... Uh, it, it does good damage. Uh, primary is good. Secondary is really good. You can double tap, triple tap the secondary if you have enough mana. Uh, and that just kind of burns everything to a crisp. So, it's definitely good. But, it's just not... I say it's good. I shouldn't say it's good. It's it's okay. <laughs> it's okay because it uses a lot of your mana. And it just... There's no crowd control with it. Okay? You kind of have to play around it for sure. And if you're out of mana and you still got enemies, what are you going to do? You know what I'm saying? So, <clears throat> yeah. But as far as as far as compared to the rest of the stuff on the C tier, it's probably better. Okay. Flamethrower. If you're looking for a ranged fire weapon, I've got you covered. Um, I'm going to put Flamethrower behind, behind the crossbow. Uh, yeah. So Flamethrower is good. It can headshot, uh, unlike the fireball. I don't think the fireball can headshot. Pretty sure it can't. Um, flamethrower can headshot, and the secondary is a burn effect, which is pretty uh, pretty nice. You can just run down the line and just burn everything. So if you have shields on Rift Lord, uh, orcs come out with shields. You just burn them up and get them all nice and, and low uh, health. Um, you can just sit there on top of like fire tar, if you have like a, um, uh, any way to regenerate mana, like the mana rage trinket, or if you have the molten gold that, that drops potions. You just sit there underneath it and just have the right mouse button held down and just kind of kill every single enemy that walks into it man it's crazy um <clears throat> i mean it's somewhat situational again because it's fire so you know fire immune enemies you're not going to bring it for that obviously but still um for those maps that you can use it it's pretty fun it's pretty fun to use and it's uh pretty pretty cool uh it does a lot of damage but i don't think it complements your kill box and it it doesn't really hold its own like these other uh weapons and, and uh yeah these other weapons do all right, Flip Trap. You know, I kind of wanted to put this on S tier. It's really, really good, especially late game endless combos. Um, not really sure speed running. Uh, casual play, it's a lot of fun. Uh, and first time playthrough, it's definitely useful. Flip Trap's best trap. But for this, <laughs> for this uh, tier, we we can't really have it in S tier. I don't think. I I have to put it in A tier, uh, A plus tier for sure. So, um, if you haven't used the flip trap in your loadout, I'd highly, highly recommend it. It's a lot of fun to use. Make sure you get the, the flip that flips big enemies. The other one I, I've never used. I've never used the other upgrade. I don't even remember what it is. And I know a lot about the game. So, you know, that's telling you something. Um, <clears throat> yeah. So, okay. So, Floor Scorcher. Uh, situational. I think it's more such. I think it's better. I think it's better than the Boom Barrel Roller. Uh, dispenser uh you know you put it outside your kill box a lot of times and force it inwards or if you put it on the wall you can put it like where barricades if you're using barricades you're you're amazing where the barricades are are sticking into the wall you put it there to go into the kill box and that burns everything so if you don't have another good source of fire um which fire lasers or fire arrows you know or flame through or you know any other fire that you can have then floor scorcher is the one for you because it's going to burn everything in that in that line much like the freeze wall is going to burn it or, or freeze or melt everything floor scorcher is going to burn everything so um it's one thing to know enemies that get flipped on it don't take burn damage so that's something to note i guess um and all the enemies in front of it will take burn damage but you know there you go all right freedom trinkets it's probably not as good as the chain stat but better than the elven short sword freedom trinket allows you to uh resist uh crowd control effects one of the most annoying things in Order Enclave, which is one of the hardest maps in the game, maybe top two, that and Slagfield, are, are bats. Uh, shock bats and ice bats. These, the, an ice bat will hit you, and then you'll have like three ice bats, you know, and they'll just take turns hitting you, and you'll be frozen. You know, it's like getting, it's like getting stunned by ogres in Orcs Must Die 1 uh, with like two or three of them in front of you, and there's no, there's no getting out of it, except in that one, when you die, you lose rip points, so you gotta restart. Uh, in this one, you can die all you want, so it's not the worst thing in the world, but still super annoying, and you can easily easily lose rift points because enemies will start flooding into your uh, rift. Um, <clears throat> if you're not there to take care of it, in order on cliff is such a short map that it happens, and it definitely can't happen. So, if you're struggling with that, you know, with bats being a problem, I'd, I'd recommend maybe throwing it in there. So it has a purpose, 
but it's very uh, very rare that I probably ever use it so but it is there and it's it's good for a melee build too so ogre charge won't stun you kind of thing all right we got Gabriella hmm I'm gonna Gabriella on C tier bottom of C tier um her ability is the worst ability to have I think uh, compared to all the rest of them so she has slow fall but it doesn't matter because you don't take fall damage and uh, it doesn't matter <laughs> okay Gabri it, it just doesn't matter I think she's the one that has like the like health and mana are the same so she's like right in the middle so you're gonna go melee you probably want to go Vorwick who has the most health if you want to go health wise if you want to go mana wise you go Egan or Cygnus if you want to go for utility you might go Kelsey maybe even Max if you want to get into certain locations because he has a double jump Gabriella can do none of those things she's not worth any of that so there's really no reason to bring as a matter of fact you know I'll just put her on D tier she's better than the Ox Satchel though that's good all right gravity pillars gravity pillars is an A trap an A tier trap um it's an A tier because it can lift enemies up for eight seconds eight seconds is a long time and while they're lifted up to take double damage right or you can do the damage per second which will then do it for five seconds per lift which is still quite a, quite a ways um, this is pretty important to have on like a minless with sappers if you have a low enough ceiling or if if you have a ceiling at all <laughs> um, the gravity pillar is definitely definitely good against sappers on top of that uh, of course crowd control reduction happens with enemies on endless so they'll be and, and their movement speed is higher so their slow will affect them less and that sort of thing but if you run gravity pillars what happens is is they get sucked up that's those that duration of them getting sucked up doesn't change and when they fall back down, they're ragdolled, and they have to stand back up. And that standing back up animation doesn't change. And so one of the best things you can do on Endless, and in general, is to use Physics Traps. Because it'll cause them to stay in one spot longer for you to do more damage. Gravity Pills will catch a lot of things. And they'll, they'll catch sappers and everything. If a sapper or a fireling blows up above your barricades, let's say you have these placed around your kill box, and you have a kill box doing a windy maze, you got like earth lords or not earth lords, fire lords or something coming in and they they die and the firelings get sucked up if they die in the air they don't hurt the gates even on even on a low ceiling where they're right next to them if they're above the barricades they don't hurt them that's important to know uh for whatever reason their collision just doesn't happen um so gravity pillars good good choice highly recommended as a matter of fact before we had lasers which came out in stadia before we had lasers, gravity pillars were our option. They were our only option, really, against sappers other than brimstone. We'd usually run tar brim, and we'd checkerboard the floor with tar brim, and we'd run gravity pillars because they were that good. I think gravity pillars dart spitters with dice combo in the ceiling. I stagger the ceiling. Grinder! I'm going to put the grinder above the pounder. Um, I've been using it a lot more. You know, I did a video on it, kind of discussing uh, how the damage works, how the damage calculation works on the grinder. And... Uh, you know, it's pretty unique, for sure. And I've gotten more of a love for it now than I did before when I did my last one. Uh, it's still not the greatest thing in the world, but, you know, I'd bring it. I'd bring it, for sure. I'd swap something out with it or run it on co-op or something like that, yeah. Archers. Archers are now A tier. They're in the top of the A tier uh, list. For Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they're, they're just good now, man. So they've buffed their damage, by the way. It used to be 10 damage a shot. Now it's 18. I don't know why they buffed them. Or, but they didn't tell us that they're going to buff their damage, but they did. On top of that, they regenerate 5 HP a second. And you can check that all out in the wiki. That's in there. Um, I forgot to mention lasers went up from 19 damage a second to 25 damage a second in this latest DLC update as well. Uh, but uh, archers, back to them. So they do regenerate now whenever they die. They don't actually disappear anymore, which is beautiful. You can set them at the back of a kill box. And as they're being attacked, you know, put arrow walls behind them or something like that. And as they're being attacked, enemies will die to uh, to them. And then if they go under, they'll come back up and they'll act as a decoy that comes back. <laughs> and they do damage. Uh, so it's really cool. Um, I, I greatly appreciate the uh, the buff that they had there um, for the archers. And I think it definitely puts them into A tier. You know, I you could even run it in, probably with your regular loadout the entire game. You don't get them right away. But when you do get them um, on a cliffside... You can probably run for the entire game and be just fine. So, you know, definitely something to, to look out for and to try and use inside your inside your loadout. All right, now we got the Gatling gun. 
I'm gonna put it above the flamethrower just because it's not fire exclusive. Um, you can do acid with it, but acid doesn't buff its own damage because its own damage is physical. But if you go acid, then it becomes nothing but acid, and acid does not buff acid. You know what I'm saying? So you can either spray and pray some acid on everybody, kind of like the flamethrower with fire, but this is with with acid. Um, find the melt debuff, or you can switch over to physical, keep physical on it, which I personally run physical. Um, but if an enemy is, a, is a resistant to physical, then you might do it for like headshot damage, you know, just to kind of shred them like an armored ogre, for example. Um, then you might run acid instead, uh, just because it'll do more damage. Uh, but yes, <clears throat> so Gatling Gun's pretty fun. It's pretty good. Haymaker. Yeah, I've got a tough time with Haymaker. Um, I think it has potential to be really good, but I just don't use it enough. And this one might change. Later on, whenever I do my deep dive into all the traps, I think the Haymaker's going to change. So, for now, it'll just sit there at the bottom of B tier. You know, it is situational. I'm, I have used it on my Wave 1000 run. I don't think I used it for that one. I used it for, like, a, uh, a run I was doing before that to kind of test some things out. Maybe I did use it for the Wave 1000 run. Um... Yeah, you know, kind of like the Haymaker, it does kind of, it, it does keep everything there for a while, because it's, it just is on a timer, it's on a duration, um, and crowd control resistance doesn't do anything about it, and the enemies get flung to the side and stuff like that, but the problem is, is it can only be A low, on low ceilings, and it does absolutely nothing to big guys, the big guys can be a problem, uh, so, yeah, even the grav, it does damage, I guess gravity pillar with damage technically does damage as well, it's just such a small amount, you'll never see a difference in the in the big guys, but it does so much against the small guys and can be used so many other places with the grab that the uh, Haymaker cannot, so, and the Haymaker can end up ruining your kill box if you have it, you know, because they'll get flown around, so whatever direction they come out could be on the other side of your kill box and not in it. Um, so a little tricky to use them situational but i think they're i think they're still good i know they have good damage really good damage but uh yeah maybe maybe not the best choice all right the health trinket i'm gonna put this um i'll put it right here all right uh health trinket's pretty good you know it, it gives you like 100 150 health or whatever almost doubling your health um and you can use it to and you have it equipped for passive regeneration as well and then you can use it to heal yourself up so if you're in a pinch um you could use it, I guess. As a matter of fact, you know what? Hang on. I'm going to move some stuff around. There we go. I'll do that. So I, I think that these other have, have more usefulness. And yeah, okay. Ice Amulet. Uh, I'm going to put Ice Amulet in A tier. Yeah, but I'm going to leave it at the bottom of A tier. Um, so the Ice Amulet uses more mana than its counterpart that everybody uses, which is Stone Staff. Um, but the secondary is cool, and the freeze duration is like five, six seconds with the bonus upgrade. Which is a long time. It's a long time to be frozen. Um, and it's such a good radius as well that if you jump into a kill box, I mean, if you're like in the center of a kill box, you got a zigzag going on and like you're in the middle, freeze everything. It's crazy. Cool. Uh, let all your traps come off cool down and everything. Stone stuff really can't do that much. Um, but it's got such a high mana cost for everything. And the primary mana cost, it's just, it's a lot to it. So, yeah, you know, use it, run it. Uh, but think it's the bottom of the A tier. There's maybe a better choice. Yeah, I think that I even think the grenade launcher is a better freeze because you freeze things as they're in your kill box with the grenade launcher and you can pop so many of them off and you still got damage. It doesn't cost mana to like, you know, auto attack. So I think the grenade launcher is even a better freeze than the than the ice amulet. Now we got Jar Ghost. Jar Ghost is going to be right here. I'm gonna put Jar Ghost right here in the B tier. Um Jar Ghost is pretty good. It has the fear effect. Uh, the scared effect, I'm sorry, scared effect, which is Jar Ghost and the Beehive. That's the only thing that can do it. So it has its own unique little combo area. When you get shot by a range unit and you're in melee or, or around other enemies, they'll get feared. And so it's a bit of extra crowd control that's kind of passive, which is nice. Um, and then you can pop it, of course, right right at the beginning of your kill box and let enemies walk back and forth inside of a kill box because of it. It doesn't always work. Some enemies, for whatever reason, the checkpoint seems to be on the other side. And so they'll walk through it, even though they're feared. Uh, so that's a bit of uh, unfortunateness. Um, but, um, but, yeah, I mean, I, I, I probably wouldn't bring it. Even going co-op, I wouldn't necessarily bring it. Uh, but it's not bad. It's not bad. And if you run melee, it's definitely a good thing to bring on melee. Kelsey! Where are we going to put you, Kelsey? Where are we going to put you? You know what? You're right there. Kelsey is a C-tier uh, champ for me. 
Uh, her levitate's kind of cool, but again, the usefulness isn't quite there. Um, two situations where that's a maybe, which is the Warhammer, like I was explaining earlier, stand over a pit, Warhammer kind of cyclones enemies into you, and then you drop it, and then you cyclone drop it, cyclone drop it, and then they'll just keep falling into the pit. Maybe. I haven't really tested that out too much. But the other thing that you can do with Kelsey is you can levitate off of the cliff or off of the side of the map or whatever over a hazard, and an ogre will target you, charge at you, knocking enemies into the pit. So that's also a possibility. Um, <clears throat> other than that, though, I don't really know of a reason why her levitate exists, but it does have a purpose. Unlike every else, it actually serves a purpose, potentially, <laughs> if you use it right. Longbow. Um, my first fresh playthrough that I did, all maps one video. The first one I did on that, I used the longbow. The second one, I used the blunderbuzz. I like them both. You know, I, I do, but the longbow has pierce. You pierce two enemies. When you're on bleed, you can kill a bat in two hits. You know, pop, pop, and then it bleeds to death. So, that. And the secondary shreds the big guys. You don't have to worry about them. You just stone staff and then go. Secondary, spam right mouse button. And then uh, armored ogre dead. Mountain troll dead. Whatever it is, dead. As long as all the shots from the secondary land. It's dead. Uh, you're out of mana, <laughs> but it's dead. So, um, <clears throat> especially if you can get like maybe the crossbow stun with the 15%, and then you get like a, some freeze or something. A little bit of extra augmentation. It's going to cost a lot less mana. Uh, but on Riffler difficulty, I mean, it's it's just such a good such a good weapon. So, um, that's why I use the secondary, anyways. With the with that, uh, yeah. So, all right, mana rage trinket. You know, mana is key. I'm going to go ahead and put it above the Gatling gun. Uh, Mana is kind of key in a lot of situations. It allows you to uh, use your your magic items more. It allows you to, you know, use secondary blade staff or crossbow or plunderbuster, or magic longbow or anything. Almost like double the amount, uh, which is which is pretty good. Um, you might find yourself in a situation where you need mana and you pop, boom pop it and you you've almost got full mana and it regenerates, so you can continue to use it while it's regenerating, um, which is also nice. It's nice that it's not just a full heal or a full like recovery because if you have like a lower mana pool like Warwick, then it's then it's kind of wasted. So it allows someone like Warwick to really make a lot of use out of it. Maxi boy, I'm gonna put Maxi boy right here on top of the hammer because it's kind of cool. Max and the hammer is uh, you know cool combo. But I you know his double jump is cool. It can get you into certain places like on Slagfield for example to be able to take care of bats where no one else can. Um, <clears throat> And he is kind of the main hero or the main person in the story, sort of. But uh, yeah, no, his his abilities. I mean, he's not, not nothing really too special, but he does have some utility with his double jump. It's easier to catch flyers. It's easier to get around the map. Um, so therefore, I put Max at B tier. Molten Gold. I'm gonna put Molten Gold at A trap. Uh, I'm gonna put it behind the flamethrower. You know, it, it'll pay itself off in endless, obviously. But you use a slot to do it. Uh, and you don't always want to use your slot for things that aren't going to help you in the long run and it may help you in the short term Maybe not so much in the long term, you know because the debuff it, it provides is called shiny and the shiny debuff is effective like everything else crowd control reduction where it reduces itself So it's a very small amount of time after wave 60 to kill an enemy after it gets affected by the molten gold for you to even get coins from it and so it diminishes its its value it, like its value just completely drops off at wave 60. It's possible to get things dead, but it's just unlikely at that point. So on top of that, you want to, you have other ceiling traps that you want to kind of stagger out and it just becomes, you know, it might become a little bit difficult um, to run it, but it is a very good source of money. Late game endless. For sure. hundred um, percent. Okay. Push trap, push trap, push trap. I'm going to put push trap down here in the C tier, uh, probably right here. So it has utility. I just don't see it being that great. Um, as of right now, okay, as of right now, it can stun big guys, but it can't push them. I think an orc was when I pushed them, right? Or at least stun them. Um, the damage isn't great. The cooldown's relatively high. Um, there's just better traps like the flip trap if you want to go physics. Flip trap, pounder combo, physics, easy. Uh, and there's better wall traps, 100%. You got the air wall. I mean, you got the, uh, uh, wall spikes. You got the grind. You got the wall charge. I mean, you get so many better... Uh, wall traps as well. So, yeah. All right, reptilian carapus. I would recommend the reptilian carapus right there on B tier. 
Um, 70% damage reduction is pretty, pretty crazy high. And it will allow you to live through quite a bit. Um, you know, one of the things that can kill you pretty easily is, of course, flyers. But not only that, um, cycloptic mages. They're pretty powerful. They have a high damage output. The um, Teratua assassins are pretty high damage output. And if dying is your problem, then this is definitely going to help you. And I think it's just maybe a good thing to kind of leave in your loadout um if you you know if you feel like it so it's situational i wouldn't bring it all the time um but yeah especially for a melee build this is like the number one thing you want in a melee build is the reptilian carapace other than the manor trinket of course all right ring of storms i think the ring of storms is is good but i don't think it's a tier good um it's good for popping it in the beginning of a wave or in the middle of a wave or when you're fighting like the last big guy and you need him to die to make part time then popping a ring of storms can help um the Rift Lightning's okay. It doesn't really save you. It's not going to insta-kill a big bat. Um, it's going to almost insta-kill a big bat, but not. And that's a problem. Um, because it'll it'll still walk through your... Uh, through your or just fly into your Rift. Even if it gets zapped. Um, it's not bad, though. It's not, it's not bad by any means. I just don't... It's situational, you know? Um, I wouldn't worry about bringing it too much, but if you do like to kind of kill everything fast i guess um or if you speed run it might be a good choice for you to bring a lightning ring okay rip saws rip saws are a really high damage output trap really really high damage bad for combos good for damage uh they're freeze as well when you run it you probably want to get the freeze um yeah they're they're good they're high they're high cooldown or higher cooldown um a little bit awkward on the floor but that's not too bad uh, and yeah, really, really high damage output. They're a little bit wonky to use, but still, they're there. Um, so A tier, just because of their damage output, is, is pretty bonkers. Ah, now I got the Sawblade Launcher. Do we put the Sawblade Launcher in A <clears throat> or S? I think we put it in A. There are maps that I wouldn't normally use it on that I'd probably use other traps. So I'm going to have to put it in A tier. It's really good for applying the bleed debuff against enemies. Uh, I wouldn't mm, probably ever run Explosion. I really haven't, and I haven't really found a great reason to do that. Um, they've become better because of the Teratua race. They kind of die to these things pretty easily. Um, especially if you get like the special bounce that I showed off in the video about saw blades. Um, I just can't put it to, you know, S tier is really special stuff, right? A tier is like the A team, but like S tier is like the specialized A team. The, it's the A team that nobody knows about because that's how good they are, you know. So by no means am I saying this is bad, but I just I think it's a little bit situational based on what you're gonna bring for your entire loadout. However, oftentimes you might pick this, often, oftentimes to to include in your loadout. This this S tier isn't gonna be full loadout, so feel free to bring whatever you want in this A tier. All right, next thing we got Shock Zappers. Hmm. I'm going to put Shock Zappers right here. I don't really use them enough. I know they're pretty decent, and they're good on... They're kind of good on speed runs. Um, and you can kind of leave them in the kill box and expect the kill box to do pretty good. The problem is they don't really have area effect damage unless they do a kill and you get the upgrade for it. Uh, then maybe... But since they're single target damage, they're better at like the end of a kill box to catch the big guys with stun. Because you can run stun on it as well. And you can run that with like like a wall trap, like arrow walls or something. Um, and so the damage is there. It's got charges, of course. Um, but it kind of has to be augmented by other traps really to shine. Especially, you have to have like group killing power in the beginning where this isn't. Where you put like one of them up there in, inside of a group. And then the cleanup is, is where this tower is really good because it's, it's a target. Uh, as soon as an enemy walks into its range, it goes zap. So nothing's going to get through it. So it's a very good cleanup trap. Not so much in the beginning of your kill box. However, I think it's still really good and definitely something to bring within your loadout. Snow Cannon. We're going to throw it in the back. Okay, I think it's good. It's really good for combos and endless and stuff like that. But uh, not so much casual play, not so much first time play. It's going to be a little hard to use. It's going to be harder to rely on if you're not used to its range because its range is relatively short. So if you try to use it on the basement, you might find that it's not doing what you want it to do. 
um but you know since it's good for a lot of other things um you know it, it's a solid trap a solid trap but uh you know i'll put it right here i'm gonna this around a little bit there we go okay the sod um i hate to say it but the sod is probably the best weapon not <laughs> we haven't got to the best weapon but sod is really good um there has been some time ago, and it's probably ancient by now, there was some controversy on me using an auto clicker when using the sod because the the attack speed is just absolutely bonkers when you use an auto clicker uh, with the scepter of domination. It's absolutely bonkers. But scepter of domination also provides a times five combo by itself. Tech the, theoretically, it'll be difficult to pull it off. You most likely just get times threes, but you can. Um, really good way to apply the arcane debuff. You got a charm, which no other weapon does. It's not a mechanic anywhere else in the game. So you take an enemy over as yours and they'll fight for you kind of thing, which is nice, you know, armored ogre or something. Um, just kind of stall out the wave or keep enemies in an area. This used to have a bug where the enemy who died that was charmed would explode and do damage to barricades. That's no longer the case. Um, it seems to be a case with one of the buffs, which is enemies explode on death. Uh, and that hurts Cades <laughs> in a similar fashion to what this used to, but it no longer does. Um, so that's cool. All right. The floor spikes. Hmm. Okay. That's that's about where I'll put the floor spikes. You know, they just they just don't do anything useful, except for hurt it all of the enemies on top of them. But like to get a bunch of enemies in one square isn't the easiest thing in the world. And then the damage by the time you're able to do that on endless with padding weirdness. By the time you're able to do that, first of all, you have to have barricades all around you, so you can't fit these anyways. But if you could, uh, they're they just don't do a lot of damage, you know. Um, so they're they're kind of cool and unique in the fact that you can go arcane, physical, or lightning, uh, three elements in one. But they just they even buffed them, and they're, and they're just not just not great. All right, we got the spike wall. I'm gonna throw a spike wall right here. As you can see, it's kind of split with uh, like the upper A and like the lower A, you know, with like how good it is. Um, the split with the uh, with some of the weapons here. So you got middle A and lower A with traps, and then the weapons are kind of splitting it up in their own respective groups. But but spike was really really good. You can you can do it uh, vertically, so flip enemies upwards and then outwards, um, smack them downwards, whatever you want to do. Uh, but yeah, it's a uh, it's a really good I mean it's a really good trap and it knocks back the big guys which is huge huge on endless really good for scoring it's a times three by itself with either stun or bleed um, you know it, it, it's a good trap it's a good trap overall it affects every enemy in front of it um, and it does a lot of damage so you really can't go wrong with the spike wall uh, it, it's a little hard to place though some of the places that you, you want to place it are difficult I will give it that so it's got that going against it because it's so large but it's a good trap Stone staff. Hmm. <clears throat> I want to put it behind barricades, but above air walls. The stone staff is the best weapon in the game. 100%. It's got the two unique upgrades. Both of them are good in their own respective ways. Stone staff pierces three times uh, for my testing. Um, so hits all the three enemies in a row, uh, which is pretty nice. I actually thought it was two until today when I tested it. Uh, or yesterday. <clears throat> yeah, yesterday, and it pierced three times. So crazy cool. Uh, but yeah, Stone Staff definitely S tier weapon. Uh, if you are going to bring any weapon, usually you'd want another weapon to augment this one. You use this one to keep everything still while you headshot it with another weapon. Uh, however, you don't have to. I mean, Stone Staff is just good enough to where you can keep enemies inside of a kill box. You have enough mana with one of the S tier champions or heroes um, to keep enemies inside of a kill box. Uh, and they'll just take all the damage that is in the kill box. So there you go. All right, we have now... The swinging mace. 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 I'm going to put it over here by the four spikes. Um, when they released the game on Stadia, on Steam, from Stadia, it, it was good on Stadia, and then they released it with a new patch update thing. They made it 300 coin cheaper, but they made it worse. I don't know what they changed about it, but the hitbox isn't as good, and it doesn't do as much like knock around as it used to. It used to actually do pretty good. I, I used to run it on my endless. Not anymore. 
um i just don't use it anymore it's it's just it's so like hit and miss as to whether or not it collides with an enemy and does damage or not and it's just ah, it just doesn't feel the same man compared to one and two it's absolutely worse <laughs> even the stadium one's worse but the stadium one i think was in a good was in a good location a good place um now it's it's just it's just sad rest in peace now we got the tar trap the tar trap is one of the best traps in the game 100 percent a little bit of slow goes a long way and you know how you get that consistent little bit of slow tar Tar's going to catch everything it's going to allow uh arrow walls to trigger and hit runners uh cobalt runners uh it's going to allow uh lasers it, it just uh, any any traps that do damage or that have triggers or delays or anything on top of tar are just going to be that much more effective 100 percent It'll clump up enemies for your distraction or for your fear or for a stun or for anything. It's just going to clump them up as they're on the tar. It's going to keep them in the kill box zone. The kill lane is going to keep them there for a lot longer. You know, it's, so it's such a good augmenter to everything that you have and to you. For you to be able to, if you die or something, you come back to life. If they're slowed, they're not going to make it as far. And so you have better, an easier time of cleanup. So a little bit goes a long way for sure. The trap reset, you know, usually, usually I have the trap reset trinket in my inventory, but I'm going to put it on eight on the top of eight tier, Um, because you don't always necessarily need it. You could swap it out for another trap for sure. Actually, you know what? Yeah, I'll put it in S tier. I'll put it in S tier. Yeah, you definitely want it in almost everything you do to include speed runs, casual play, first time playthrough, everything really. Uh, it, it does a 10% trap cooldown by default. And 20% with the upgrade. The special upgrade. Right? Or unique upgrade. Maybe unique upgrade. I don't remember. Um, which is the one you want. Traps reset faster by default. So 20%. Uh, really, really good. And when you use it, all your traps refire, which allows you to A, get great combos, B, kill everything faster. Uh, and yeah. yeah. So it's good. Just uh, just to be... You be aware that if all of your traps fire at the same time, they all go on cooldown at the same time, and everything coming in after that is going to run through your kill box without taking much damage because all of your traps just triggered, which is where tar comes in. Tar and lasers and other other traps like that, or low cooldown traps like the ceiling pounder, for example, might refire quickly. All right, now we got Vorwick. Um, I'm going to put Vorwick at the bottom of A tier. You know, he's got the highest uh, health, and he has a double jump, which allows him to speed across the map pretty quickly he's definitely the fastest hero there is and that can help you in a lot of situations if you're trying to clean up if you're trying to knock the leak if you um or anything like that or if you're trying to go melee and you don't want to run the uh, health trinket um warwick's a pretty good choice uh he doesn't have a whole lot of mana but you run the mana trinket with him and that kind of you know subsidizes it so yeah if you're gonna do that and he's got a cool new skin too this is the new skin um icon all right now we've got the blade the wall blades hmm. Hmm. What do I put the wall blades? I think. I think I put the wall blades here, and the reason. Do I? Do I put them? No, I'm gonna put them. I'm gonna put them right here. The wall blades are the highest possible damage output in the game. Uh, we've tested it several times, but you apply a bunch of different modifiers, and then you kill them, and it does like 1,500 damage to a regular orc, which doesn't have any weaknesses to physical. No resistances, but no weaknesses. Um. 1500 damage that's absolutely insane uh with the amount of damage you can do to the, with this guy but you really have to set it up they are cheaper than the grinder uh i think where you would use these you might use other traps instead but i, I would encourage you to give these a shot and try and, and build a kill box around physical damage and use these as your as your kill power for sure that brings us to the wall charger i'm gonna put the wall charger up in the upper uh, echelon of the a tier um, this thing will absolutely save your life for the big guys. If you kill the small guys in the front, get, take care of the big guys in the back. The wall charger is your trap 100% of the time. Um, the stun with the electric uh, damage that it does, it takes care of uh, the ogres and the trolls um, really easily. It does a lot of damage, stuns everything in front of it. Like I said, three second stun. It's got a lo long cooldown, but it does a ton of damage. And so when you have it, the big guys kind of walking through, they're just going to get zapped and they just pummeled and pummeled with this, uh, with this uh, damage. So, way, way better for those guys than the grinders. Plenty of other things to take care of small guys than the grinders. Of course, you can use them to help as well. But um, even comboing these uh, these two, 
you know you could stack wall chargers on top of grinders grinders will hurt everything wall chargers will only hurt the big guys with ogres and trolls and stuff it won't trigger and hurt anything below it um and so you can even double stack them that's a totally viable option okay next up is wind belt um yeah you know i yeah I'll, I'll probably put it behind the warhammer uh the wind belt is it's got utility i don't really use it very much uh it doesn't launch enemies very far but it does launch them back which is nice because it's double damage the secondary this doesn't do anything you know other than testing i i love to use it for testing right i pick up an orc and i'll go put him in a situation and then see what happens right um but other than that it's just not it's not worth it so i, I don't know it's it just doesn't do it for me. Um, you can't like pull things to you like like coins or whatever, you know, um, which isn't really a problem right now, but still, uh, it's a thing. So, yeah, I just I can't put the wind belt any higher than B. I mean, use it if you want to. It's fun to use, but um, it doesn't have like it doesn't have a lot of negatives like this stuff in C does, but it just doesn't have a lot of positives. So, yeah, it's it's a meh. All right, now we got Window of Butterflies. I'm gonna put this right here. So the Window of Butterflies is is really good. You can put it on the sides of walls because it has such a wide area. You can, like I was talking about, double stacking the wall charger and the grinder. The grinder here, the wall charger on top of it, right? Uh, you guys can see that like that. Okay, but instead, what you can do is you can do like butterfly on the bottom, and then you can do a wall charger and butterfly on top. And what the top butterfly is gonna do, it's only gonna affect the ogres ogres and other big guys because the range is actually uh one grid square lower and higher so it's actually going to cover that that third uh grid square up and so it's going to affect ogres and plus uh bosses and all that but it's not going to affect anything lower and then the lower one's going to affect everything uh everything uh down there and so they're going to be on two different timers but they're going to be taking up the same wall space um which is which is pretty awesome. Uh, plus, you can do it with uh, with a saw blade launcher. So you can saw blade launcher on the bottom, and then a regular wall trap in the middle, and then you can do a butterfly on top. Um, and that's a really really solid combo as well if you have a four high wall. So, and on top of that, it's a times three combo. Now they fixed it <laughs> for the longest time and never applied the arcane debuff. They were under the impression that it did. We found out that it didn't. Told them and they fixed it. So now it applies the arcane debuff as well as distract as well as does damage. So now it's a times three combo by itself. Really good way to apply the arcane debuff as well. Okay, now we got the war scenario traps. You know, I kind of thought about not putting these in here because I don't really use war scenarios <laughs> traps very much, <laughs> but I'll do my best. All right, S tier. Um, this is this this is really the only one I use in a realistic like way um, is the tower. Uh, you run barricades, you can make really cool mazes, and it just gives you an inside area outside. And using regular traps is much better than using war scenario traps because it's just much cleaner kills uh so yeah <laughs> of course war scenarios aren't on endless so i can't consider that and it's not really that it's kind of okay for for doing speed runs but here's what we're gonna do we're gonna put i'm just gonna pull the war scenario traps at the end of all the tiers just because i think it's better to not use war scenario traps except for the tower the outpost in that in that instance it is but that's why it's on s tier uh boom barrel uh launcher is pretty good if you can zigzag or clump up enemies into a like a pit of tar and just sit there with a boom barrel launcher or two boom barrel launchers and switch between them or even three that's going to give you the fastest cyclical rate of boom barrels um although it's going to hurt your hand because you're going to be clicking a lot um if you can do that then boom barrel launcher is great uh if you can set up do that so yeah really good option there the auto ballista i'm going to put on b it's not as good because it doesn't do as much group damage and it's a war scenario trap and war scenarios have a lot of enemies and so if it's not doing you know what i'm saying you see what i'm saying it's it's uh, a lot of enemies on a map but the trap doesn't affect a lot of enemies it only affects like one or two i don't i don't remember if it has pierce or not but yeah not great the stun upgrade is what you'd probably want on it and the time i usually use it is on front lawn to stun gorbash and you just keep poking at him um but that's situational and you can do it without a war scenario trap so yeah uh banks of archers is a tier they shred a lot too they shoot far they shoot wide and they shoot a lot they can miss and they oftentimes do miss um and they'll have a lot of wasted shots let me tell you if you count up the amount of wasted shots probably more than the amount of hit shots or non-wasted um they're gonna kind of spread their volley around and 
they're gonna miss runners dude and they're gonna target runners and they're gonna miss them and they're gonna be on cooldown or they're gonna waste their shots or whatever right so they're not the greatest thing in the world but uh you know they're not they're not that smart nobody said elves were smart nobody said that all right we got the um bowling boulder all right so bowling boulder is a problem um the reason Bowling Boulder is a problem is because it doesn't trigger on its own. This would be an A tier War Scenario Trap, one that might even be S tier if it triggered on its own. It doesn't. You have to shoot it or go up and click the letter E or F or whatever it is to actually trigger it yourself, which is nuts. <laughs> All right. It needs to have its own range. Even if it's invisible range, it needs to have a little bit of a range to trigger on its own. Then it's an A tier, possibly S tier trap. You just bring it and it would just roll and do its own thing without you. So they need that. Until then, it's a C. I, it's just, it's good, but you got to be there to do it. And the only like two maps that you're going to be able to focus on one kill box outside is the first two, which to be honest, just running a regular kill chamber with the, with the outpost is just better, you know? It's just you, you have to do less you just sit there and you just let all the enemies die everything else you kind of have to fight inside because uh you don't have to but you can uh and it's much easier to fight them inside um especially in dragon boneyard because you have the two inside gates that open up and then uh and then for the order uh order temple you do have the uh, rifts that open up on the inside and so you know you're limited to the amount of outside you know space you have you use these and if you have to be out there with them you know if they if you put them outside you sit them out there and they're in a really good position but you aren't there to shoot them you're gonna miss your opportunity and then what like it's just a waste of traps so anyways that's why i don't like it all right we got the flip trap giant flip trap i put it on the beats here a lot of people like it and it is a fun trap for sure but it triggers on kobolds and doesn't hit them and it goes on a long cooldown and if you don't have a way to clump up enemies it takes up such a large footprint you can't really clump up enemies on it unless you're there fighting on top of it other than that, you're not really going to flip much. And then things are still going to get past, even if you're fighting on top of it. So, But, you know, it's a fun trap for sure. All right, we got the Beehive. The Beehive is an A tier trap. It triggers on its own, you know, when the enemies are underneath it, which is nice, what the Bolding Boulder should do. <laughs> uh, and the Beehive, you know, it'll, it'll distract enemies or, or it gives them the scare debuff, so they run away. Um, and they take damage. It's pretty solid damage as well. Uh, and it kind of makes them go away. Um, put it in front of some doors and you might be okay for a while uh, you need something else there to do some damage uh, but the beehive is definitely a good choice uh, it's pretty solid I, I quite like it I should probably use it more but uh, like I said I just don't use war scenario traps very much all right we got the snowblower you know it's got such a long delay that again same kind of issues that the giant flip trap has where it's uh, got too much of a trigger delay um, it, it's just not that great yeah, I don't know. I just can't say anything good about it, <laughs> you know. Um, it is cheap, I guess. It's 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 relatively cheap, but it just like, takes up such a large footprint, and it's hard to get enemies on it. It's got a long trigger delay, so it's just yeah, it's it's a P tier. All right, we got tornado. Uh, if you're gonna run tornado, probably you're gonna want to run ice. It doesn't do damage. If you run the lift, if you run like the physical damage. It's gonna lift enemies up, and if it does, be careful that they don't enter into your rift. It doesn't like throw them into your castle or whatever um but it's pretty fun to watch a bunch of tornadoes roll around and, and they're effective they're pretty effective you can even put frozen ones up on the balconies where the bats come in on uh uh canyon keep and the ice will instantly freeze them as they fly over them <clears throat> assuming it's not ice bats all right then we got the knights and we got the priestesses um, I'm gonna put them on eight. These war scenario traps, by the way, are in no are in no particular order. You can think knights are better than archers, by all means. <laughs> okay, the war scenario traps are just here to be here. Um, but I put war scenario traps on the on the back end because they're not as good. Because they're not as good as like regular traps. So um, the knights and the priestesses are both pretty good. The knights good to tank things, and the priestess good to shoot things. You know, uh, of course. So. That's what it is. All right, guys. With that being said, that it does conclude our tier list. All items. Now, I know what you're thinking. 
It's a good video, and you're going to leave a like, comment, subscribe, follow stream on YouTube and Twitch. And I get that, and I appreciate that you're going to do that for me. But here's the deal. <clears throat> We've got one more to get through. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. We are going to give you a twofer for today. And that twofer is with maps. So we're going to do all items and maps tier list in one video. All right. Northwing. Easy. Uh, straightforward. It's easy. Whatever. Great room. It's a little bit on the maybe the more difficult side because it's got awkward spacing and stuff. And I like the aesthetics. It's pretty cool. Uh, this is side entrance. I'm going to put side entrance down on C. You know, it's not really one of my favorites. Um, yeah, it, it's okay. It's got a built-in kill box in front of the rift. And it's... Um, you know, funnily enough, this one actually is a little bit on the challenging side when you run Rift Lord because it has fire immune enemies. And, like, you don't get fire immune enemies for quite a while after that. It's just, like, all of a sudden, randomly, the third level, you get them. You know? <laughs> what the heck? Anyways, um... <clears throat> But I just don't, yeah, you know what? I'll put it on B. I'll put it on B because it gives you, it gives you the kill box. It gives you the same kill box space as you have on, on, uh, uh, North Wing, which is the first map, right? It gives you the same kind of kill box space, but it's a little bit more condensed and allows you to kind of play around with it a little bit. So yeah, all right, I put it on B tier. All right, hidden dock. Hidden dock for me C tier. I don't like it because it's got archers and I hate archers in there. You should really annoy me and kill me all the time. Uh, no, that's not why, but it's. I don't know. I just don't like it very much. The aesthetics of like the, um, the rain and the dark and all that. It's not my favorite. And the layout's kind of simple. You really don't use a lot of it unless you're going to go endless. But on endless, it sucks because there's no sappers and so there's no real challenge. Uh, you go really, really far in endless and not have a problem. So, uh, for all those reasons, I just am not a huge fan of hidden dog for me. It's a C tier. All right, we've got split stairs. Oh my god, split stairs is a D tier for me. You know, you just, you cade off one side of the top of the stairs. Either you, you kill box on the other stair and you have super high ceilings. So you can't use the dart spitters, but you don't even need them because everything just dies on the stairs and you just use like 10% of the map, you know, um, there's really cool cades that you can do in the front if you were to play endless, but endless has sappers and therefore you can't really use cades. And so then you're kind of stuck with, well, if I can't use cades cause it's endless and sappers and you know but you can do really cool cade mechanics within the bottom the level in front of the doors but unfortunately you can't because of sappers and so it kind of like you know up the creek without a paddle is that what they say anyway so yeah split stairs for me kind of yeah not a huge fan um all right we got a lava pit lava pits just like north wing just kind of mediocre um you know, there's a small door on the side. I wish you could use that. That'd be kind of fun to, to play around with and give you options. But you don't have any options. You can just kill everything in the front. Um, kill everything on the on the uh, walkway. Kill everything in the first room. Whatever you want to do. Um, it's relatively easy. And uh, Now, I will say Craig. Craig comes out here. Craig is definitely uh, the, the Giga Chad boss. And, and the first time you play through, when you get to Craig, you may not have a way to really deal with him very well. Uh, and he comes out with a lot of enemies, <laughs> and he's he is the Giga Chad boss. He is the number one boss in the game. Um, so that is kind of you know that's kind of cool. Does that put him in? Nah, now nah, we'll, we might do the enemies later, and we'll rank the enemies, of course. Um, but yeah, all right. So now we've got close quarters. Close quarters is going to be an A tier for me. It's a really good challenge. It's a breath of fresh air for the challenge. Uh, whenever you get the Riffler difficulty, for sure. Um, managing two different kill boxes isn't the easiest thing in the world. And on top of that, uh, you get Earth Lords Wave 2, uh, which are difficult. Um, and I like the look of the map, and I like the way the map is laid out, and the way that you can cade on endless and everything like that, so for sure. Uh, close Quarters gets an A tier for me. Cliffside! Cliffside gets a... Mm, Cliffside's a low A tier for me. Um... It's actually pretty fun to play on Endless. Um, and Wave 1 on Rift Lord is pretty challenging. <laughs> All right. I'll say it's pretty challenging for sure. Uh, wave 1 on Rift Lord because they throw mountain pulls at you. Wave 1, which is pretty crazy. Um, there's not a lot of, of leniency when it comes to failing. Uh, and it's easy to fail on Cliffside. A lot of sappers, especially on Endless, they throw a lot of sappers at you, I believe it's Wave 8. They just kind of, like, throw everything they've got in the repository at you. 
Um, so that can be a little bit on the challenging side. But uh, yeah, I think Cliffside's a pretty fun map. Um, the aesthetics, I don't mind too much. The idea of it being like on a cliff or whatever, it's pretty cool. Uh, so yeah, I like Cliffside quite a bit. Front Lawn is maybe my favorite War Scenario map. It's open. You can do a lot of testing on it. Uh, it's really long corridors, so you can get a lot of distances and you can see a lot. That's how we that's how we tested um, the bowling boulder speed, the knockback of a lot of things. That's how we tested enemy movement speed before the game files came out, before it came out on Steam. That's how we tested flip trap distance. Um, I mean, everything, dude. Literally everything we tested on here. Uh, so, because you can see everything and it's so wide open and everything. Yeah. Anyways, I like Frontline for that reason. And it's got Gorbash. Gorbash is pretty cool. Um, you know, not the worst. It's a pretty easy one, and this one's the one you get outpost on, which just kind of tells you how easy it's supposed to be after that. So yeah, all right, we got coastal hallways. I love coastal hallways. It's one of my favorite maps in the game. I played so much on it in Stadia, on um, Endless. Uh, yeah, it's a really good Endless map. Really fun. You can do nice corridor, tight corridor um, stuff, but you still have a challenge when it comes to firelings, fire elementals, uh, fire lords. I believe come out as well, and sappers. Um, so they kind of throw a lot at you, but you have space to work with as well. You can do really cool cades, really cool cades setups and everything on this map. Um, beautiful map. So yeah, Coastal Hallways is up there for me. Uh, Secret Fortress is up there for me. I love Secret Fortress. I have still yet to play it on Endless Solo. So I think at all, actually. Um, other than <laughs> with the with the mods and glitched and stuff like that, I have played it many times on Endless. It's not officially. Um, Secret Fortress is a lot of fun, I think. Uh, you know, it's it's almost too simple, but then the space that you have to kill behind the bridge is actually an awkwardly shaped space, and so you can't really fit ball traps perfectly, and um, you can easily make mistakes by placing your barricades wrong and, and stuff like that. But uh, and, and it gives you what two armored ogres and two trolls, in like wave one, and those can be difficult to deal with for sure. Um, it gives you sappers as well, so yeah, a lot of cool stuff with the secret fortress. Right, we got mage tower. I'm gonna put mage tower under split stairs because with split stairs there is a potential to do something fun with barricades but mage tower it's just boring <laughs> all right you could fight on the outside on both sides or whatever but to get from one side to the other takes a while even if you're warwick it takes a while because you got to jump through it even if you go through the portal to get to the other portal it takes forever and so it just doesn't feel like you can easily manage both sides even though you probably could and it's a worse it's a um, weekly challenge to do that um I just, you know, I, I just, it's just one of those ones where you set up the kill box of wave one, you just kind of sit there and just talk to your audience or whatever. And, you know, every time I run into that, I definitely do. <laughs> um, but yeah, all right, cool. So then we've got, uh, then we've got uh, Master's Courtyard. I think Master's Courtyard is really cool. I like the way that it's laid out. Um, you have several different barricading options that all make part time. You could even speed run it at every single gate and do pretty well. Um, so I, I like Master's Courtyard quite a bit. All right, that's what I'll say. Uh, aesthetically, it's nice and everything. All right, we got uh, Sludge Shelves. I'm going to put Sludge Shelves at the bottom of S tier. No, I'm going to put it at the top of A tier. The reason I'm going to do that is because of the freaking Sappers, dude. It's so annoying. It would be an S tier map for me, but the Sappers, when they explode down on the second or third level down and they'll hit an enemy and the enemy will go pew, pew, rift right into the rift it's like they're it's like they're playing a whole nother game like the sappers it's like trying to trying to play a game where he explodes enemies into the rift like golf <laughs> it's ridiculous or like pool um right into the pocket right so anyways if it wasn't for that then it would be fine i like it dragon bone yard is boring and long and the boss is a wimp a total simp if i can say that i don't know if i can say that on youtube um yeah man he just it's just such a boring map you know i just don't like it very much so it just goes there you know i can't really i can't really defend it um i've seen it cause people problems but at the end of the day you can spend you can make it like super duper safe in the end with like three minutes of part time. Um, there's really not much of a challenge to it at all. Once you figure it out. 
but there's so many different ways to do it and they all work and they all work really well that it just yeah i just can't get behind can't get behind it. okay uh then we got the basement i'm gonna put the basement at the bottom of seats here um since it's become endless and we figured out some barricade pathing and some flip trap shenanigans it's pretty fun to actually play on endless um it's a lot of unique stuff that you can do maybe you just play like once or twice try and get high score kind of thing but there's some unique stuff you can do uh however you know you don't really even on endless you still don't use the basement of the basement other than to flip enemies down there so they can walk back up the back end uh into your kill box <laughs> you know um so i think you know the way that it's made in the map i just i don't like it a ton i wish you could barricade behind the rift and have enemies walk up behind the rift and walk up the other side or something like that you know but um there's not a lot of options there so yeah coliseum i absolutely love coliseum i think coliseum is one of the best maps i've ever made I love the layout, I love the enemy uh, um, configuration, um, and I love the amount of, of stuff that you have to be a part of. You have to be a part of your traps. Your traps shine on Coliseum, but you have to be a part of it. You know, you cannot relax, you cannot walk away. You know, death is, is pretty unfortunate to happen on this map. Um, there's just a lot that you have to do and, and there's a lot to really understand about the map plus it's very open i mean it's a lot of fun uh and like i said the configuration of enemies is really cool i'm um, having all the different enemies there to fight for you just thematically makes a lot of sense and uh yeah i just enjoy it quite a bit so yeah and then we've got another war scenario this is order temple i'm gonna put order temple on b so order temple has a mechanic of spawning rifts within your thing it could they could have done a lot cooler of a job with like Vorik being an ultimate boss and walking around kind of like a loon's boss and you got to kill him as he walks around or response more riffs or whatever i don't know they could have done a lot of cool things with it it's still okay um the map is all right <clears throat> it's it's pretty it's pretty okay i would say and that's why it's a b tier map um all right then we got uh abandoned passage it's the first flyer map i'm gonna put this on b tier it's all right nothing too special about it you kill everything as soon as it comes out the gate and then you just get, take care of the flyers yourself and it's that easy um aqueducts i quite like aqueducts actually i'm gonna put it on a tier it's my favorite flyer no 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 it's not i'm gonna put it on a tier um but upper a tier so uh yeah it's a bit of a challenge and it's a lot of fun uh looks cool i like the look of it a lot um so yeah it's an a tier for me then we got canyon keep another um war scenario um this one i don't mind as much it's got i think it has a uh, maybe it's the same part time but yeah anyways canyon keep um it's it's okay it's all right the pathing that you can do with it is pretty fun to kind of mess around with um of course you kind of want to build inside but you definitely could build outside as long as you take care of the sapper or the flyers on the inside um <clears throat> yeah i don't know uh chromatic is an okay boss uh obviously he's weak but he can't get he can't get like crowd controlled hard he can get soft crowd controlled with like uh tar um, or butterflies or something like that, but he can't get hard crowd control with freeze or, or petrification. So that makes him in, in in his own way a little bit of a challenge, but it's really not too bad uh, to take care of Chromatica. He takes a lot of headshot damage. Order Enclave is an S tier map. Uh, I love Order Enclave, man. There's so much going on. <laughs> it's just so action packed and like you make a mistake and you lose kind of thing. Um, like, like, in every single map, right, in this entire game, death doesn't matter. De it sort of does. Death speeds up enemies by 25% while you're dead, and when you come back, they slow back down. And it allows them to, forces them to drop aggro. So if they're attacking an archer or, an, or another player, they drop aggro when you're dead, when one of you are dead. Um, on most maps, it's not a bad thing. On most maps, you die, then you come back, you do a little bit of cleanup if they leak through your kill box, and it's whatever. If you die on this map, it's so condensed, you don't really have a lot of time to like fix it <laughs> you know it gets pretty hectic pretty quick uh so i love order on click for that reason for that reason it's an esther you know what i'm actually gonna put it right here Here go all right next one is slag field i'm gonna cycle in the back um this one the challenging part about this one for me personally is part-time uh you can make it if you build both of your kill boxes in the back and it's safe so when you play safe you can still make part-time but barely you have to you still have to kind of get involved in what's in what's going on uh in order to make part-time um 
and did not lose lives as well. So very kind of finicky, kind of stifling the line of like being too difficult and being do just difficult enough for Slack builds. So definitely S tier for me. And I like the map. Um, I think the map layout is really cool. All right, now we're getting to the ice maps. Okay, these maps are, let's see, this is the first one. I don't remember what it's called. Uh, and the second one is Icebound Mines, and we've got Frostbitten. So these are A and S tiers. I absolutely love the thematics with these. Um, I think the maps are beautifully made. I've like zoomed, I've, I've used a camera hack thing and zoomed around them, and they're just, even the outsides are gorgeous. I mean, they tell such a story, and it's so, so they're such great maps. Um, I really can't complain about these. Uh, this one has flyers. I guess I can. <laughs> this one does too, but they, they're easy to take care of. Um, unfortunately, I spent mine that almost forces you to build backwards towards the rift just because of the flyers that kind of come out and they go into that area. Um, I'm not worried too much about the lane composition. We'll talk about shamans and where I rate them when we do enemies. Uh, that will be a later day. Um, but as far as like maps are concerned, like the layout of the map, I think I like it a lot. I wish also there was a way to, to move from, from gate to gate instead of having to go around the entire map. <laughs> I don't know, maybe they tested it and thought it was too easy and put a blockade there, but uh, that'd be nice to have. Um, especially because you do have shamans, which would make you have to keep going back and forth and then not take care of your flyers or whatever. Uh, and then the first one is, is pretty fun. It's really fun to mess around with and figure that one out as well. And then Frostbitten, oh my, oh man, Frostbitten really causes you to have to, you know, pay attention to what's going on. Um, and this is probably the first one that I would say that it's really imperative I think this one in Order Enclave, it's really imperative that you kind of almost write down and take notes what the wave compositions are. Like, when did the sappers come out and out of what gate? Which wave and out of what gate? Um, which wave and out of what gate do the shamans show up? And then you go over there and you take care of them, and then you go run over to your other kill box to take care of the kill box or the leaks or whatever. And this one in Order Enclave, I think, are like the two main ones that you really have to watch out for for that. Um, which kind of gives it another love, you know, layer of strategy that you need to use for these. So that's really cool. Um, I like it. You know, you got to run to three different kill boxes usually. Um, you could try and do four, but good luck on that. <laughs> um, but yeah, three different kill boxes for sure. Really crazy stuff. All right, now we got switchbacks. Um, I'm gonna put switchbacks on A. I'm gonna put it at the end of A. Um, actually, I gotta put my war scenario at the end of A. So switchbacks is a lot of fun, I think, to really test around with barricades and barricading around the rift. I mean, we've done so much with like figuring out good barricade optimization and everything. It's such a fun map to test around and try stuff out with, and it's an endless exclusive, so you don't see it a lot. Um, it's a fun map. I wish it was a story mode map. I wish this and quick pass were both story mode, but you know, whatever. Um, Quick pass, obviously S tier. <laughs> we didn't play for 56 hours straight for not to be S tier. Um, <laughs> now this one's for sure like the best endless map there is. Um, you can go, you can go so so far. We made it to th wave 1001 with quick pass, so it's absolutely crazy. Um, yeah. <laughs> if you want to know more about it, just watch that uh, playlist. All right. We now have the first Tuatera stand dlc map i don't remember what it's called um the aesthetics of this it just it's really plain and kind of boring right um there's just a not not a lot going on not a lot to look at it's not very appeasing to the eye you got like a pool of water and just walls and ceilings and that's it you know there's nothing cool about it i don't think um like you can't, I don't even think you can see sand on it, uh, uh, at all ever. Um, so it's very basic. Now I know that I know why, and it's because this one and the next one that we're going to talk about were both rushed and put in at the end, because uh, initially they were only going to come out with three maps, and then they ended up adding these two maps after that. Uh, we know because of the game files tells us that, um, because initially it only had three maps, and then we looked at it and we were like, interesting. They're only releasing three, and then they released five, and then looking at you know, doing my, my camera hack, zooming around, it, it's very obvious which ones they took time on and which ones they didn't, and this one and the next one they didn't take time on. Um, that being said, people still like it. I still think it's... I don't think this one's as much of a challenge at all. Um, it's actually really, really easy, uh, even on Riftlord. 
so for the fact that it's super simple um, of a design um, and that it's really easy to beat, I just had to put it on C tier. They could have done a lot better job with this. Now we've got uh, um, Oasis Outpost. Uh, Oasis Outpost is bottom of B tier. This is the other one that was rushed. And again, it just doesn't feel super unique. Um, mechanically, I guess it's pretty good, but the pathing on it isn't great. You can really abuse the pathing if you're going to play on Endless, uh, which is just absolutely crazy. And <clears throat> yeah, it's not super difficult either. Uh, Part-time can be a little bit of a challenge. You do have to build two different kill boxes to make part-time and still take care of the flyers. Um, or at least kill everything outside the gate on, on wave one and two on the right hand side and then build in front of like the rift room uh, and try and kill everything as fast as possible just to barely make part time. So part time is a little tough on it. Uh, unfortunately, you kind of split up your kill boxes, but overall, it's not too bad. Um, all right. <clears throat> now we get to untrained grounds. This is the Orcs Die Unchained um, training grounds map that they ported over. Uh, which is cool. Uh, this is these three are originally were going to be in the DLC. Um, I don't know if the wall was going to be uh, a war scenario or not. In, initially, I think it was um, through the game files, but I'm not sure. It could have actually just been a regular map like the wall in Orchmastine Chained as well. But it's not the case. Um, Untrained Grounds for me is. I think I had to put it at. Um, I'll put it in. A tier above switch. No, I'll put it behind switchbacks. Um, you know, story mode wise, you don't use a lot of the map. Um, it's pretty easy to barricade around, and it's not a super difficult map either. You can really automate one side pretty easily and then hang out on the other side and, and take care of it. Um, so it's not super difficult. There's no sappers. There needs to be sappers if they want to make it a real challenge. They add sappers 100% <clears throat> of the time. Um, but uh, but no, I don't think it's too difficult at all, and part time is pretty lenient. So yeah, but I do like the fact that it's a blast from the past, and I was able to look at it and you know think about how I was playing the map on Unchained, and you know make some of those modifications. Um, but uh, yeah, it, it, it's there, sir. Um, okay, then we've got uh, Sand Sea Castle. Sand Sea Castle is going to go up in S tier for me. It's definitely a challenge, and I like that. I like that quite a bit. And it's one of those that you kind of have to not necessarily know the wave composition, but know when waves are coming out and out of what gate. So that way you can be in the right place at the right time. Um, and you have to split your traps up between three different gates. I don't think that's ever happened. Dan, this is all to make part time, but I don't think that's ever happened in Orcs Must Die 3. You don't have you don't have a map that requires three different kill boxes. Um, I have played this once with two different kill boxes. It's very, very, very tight on part time. So tight that we couldn't make it happen more than once. <laughs> so yeah, that is what it is. All right, then we got the wall. I think the wall is actually a pretty decent uh, war scenario trap or war scenario map, I should say. Um, yeah, uh, it, it's it's pretty cool. Um, you know, actually, now I think about it, aesthetically, is better. No, you know what? I don't like it as much as Lava Pits. But I like it more than Order Temple. Forgot I gotta put that in the in the back. Lava Pits I'll actually keep up. Uh, keep up there. I'm gonna put that there and that there and that there. There we go. Alright. I'm gonna put it there in the B tier. Um, yeah. Yeah, I just don't like it as much as Lava Pits. Uh, it doesn't have a boss, which is a missed opportunity. A lizard boss would be really cool. Um... Of course, bosses aren't like what people play for. They play for the mechanics of the game, usually. So aesthetics and bosses and cool little things like that aren't really what sell. And I think they figured that out whenever they made this DLC. Um, because their Ice DLC had that stuff in the making, but it was poorly received, even though it was really well made. People kind of hated on it, and then they got this, which isn't as well made but people loved it more because it has more to do with the mechanics and less to do with like the aesthetics um that being said uh desert wall is relatively simple as far as what it looks like um not a lot of detail goes into any of the sand maps uh, except for maybe yeah yeah just not a lot of not a lot of detail in any of them really but that's that's fine i mean i'm not hating on it because of that i'm just 
I'm just pointing it out um, uh, that that's a major difference for me. And I, and I want I want to encourage you to look around and kind of take a look at that detail, the attention to detail that was had and the difference between the two whenever you go to do your own tier list for the maps. Um, but as far as Desert Wall, uh, it's easy enough that I don't think it deserves a spot on A tier. Um, and because there's no boss, there's no real looming threat. The only looming threat you have is part-time, and that's because the right-hand gate, waves 4, 5, and 6, show up last. So if you can be out there and wave 4, 5, and 6 and kill everything at the end of the wave, or start building a kill box on the right-hand side with the outposts, then you're going to be okay. Um, you're going to make part-time. Even if you even if you just kind of like build on the right hand side of the map itself uh, around that time, then you're going to be fine. So uh, there you go. So take that for what it is, guys. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to leave a like, comment, subscribe, follow us through both YouTube and Twitch. Hope you guys enjoyed. You know, um, let me know what you like, what you don't like about it. I'll go ahead and show you the items again. Here's the items. Okay. Show you the maps. Here's the maps. Go ahead and do your own tier list. Uh, you know, drop it in the media channel or the discussion channel in the Discord link below. Um, I'd love to take a look and, and see what you have. And if there's any reasons you have what you have, you just let me know. Um, if you don't want to fill in, you know, that uh, discussion board. Or if there's, like, any major differences you have or any thoughts you have about a trap or a map or an item, uh, just let me know. You know, let me know in the chat. Um, if you're using something, if you found a reason to use the Alcatraz or something like that, you know, just let me know. Just tell me. I'm, I'm, I'd be excited to hear it. I know everybody else would as well. Um, my viewpoint is, isn't the only viewpoint out there, and, you know, I, I'm looking forward to seeing or hearing what you guys think about this sort of stuff. So, uh, yeah, with that being said, um, it's been a long video, but I hope you guys have enjoyed. Uh, at some point, I will have timestamps. I don't have them yet, but I will at some point. Uh, I already know it's going to be a comment when I upload this, because um, it, it always is. But uh, something i got to work on at work is the timestamps for the video. It's going to be a big one take a while to do it so anyways guys again i uh, hope you've enjoyed and i will see you on the flip side all right do this everybody